Uh, Dr. Sandberg, can you do me a favor and define the different types of incontinence so that people can kind of understand what we're talking about? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I think one of the most common um, types of incontinence that men will experience after prostate cancer treatment, just to keep it in that context, would be stress urinary incontinence. And stress urinary incontinence, um, I, I think to, to explain it most simply, is just incontinence due to lack of support, whether that be to weakness in the muscles that were once um, uh, necessary for incontinence or potential damage or absence of those muscles after um, of surgery. Um, those men, um, and, and it can affect women too, but but leakage tends to occur with increases in intra-abdominal pressure, with coughing, with movement, with sneezing. Um, and, and it can vary quite greatly from maybe a few drops here or there when, when somebody bends over to complete and total loss of control and having no support at all. And that, that tends to happen in prostate cancer treatment due to uh, damage from surgery or radiation to the um, external urinary sphincter as well as the intrinsic sphincter. Um, as well as if the prostate's removed, sometimes there's direct damage or, around the bladder neck, which is also uh, you know, important in incontinence. In addition to that, you can also have urge incontinence. And urge incontinence uh, happens more um, related to increased pressure within the bladder that's happening when the bladder feels as though it needs to empty, um, even if it may not be as full as it can be or as full as it once was. And so these patients tend to leak more with that urge to really have to go badly, they rush to the bathroom, they can't get there on time. Um, and, and sometimes that can occur as a result of secondary effects from radiation, for example, um, either pretty close to the treatment timeline within months, but some other times uh, years down the road. Um, and in my experience, I find really the most commonly it's it's a mix of, of two with, with one of them being most predominant, you know, between stress and urge. And it's part of our job as well to try to figure out which one is, is uh, affecting the most? Because I also find that even in men who have had radical prostatectomy, they've heard this maybe before from their other doctors, and I, and I end up talking to them, and we might do some additional testing, and we find out they actually don't have stress incontinence. They have urge incontinence, and that's important to figure out because the treatments for the two are very different.